Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. You know, the thing is here, I don't know if we could fast forward a little bit. You coming into the game. So you, the company started when your dad was born. When you right. were born, where was the company at? You're from like, what are you from like, what a six? I have I'm to go 50, back to Wikipedia. Yeah, 52. What am I? I was born in 69. 69. So. Yeah, 51. Yeah. I'll be 52 soon enough. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I, yeah, I, uh, I didn't go to the military. So I came back after about a, about a, I don't know, five, well, almost a decade mm -hmm. out of college working on my own mm -hmm. and uh, came back. And uh, I guess my claim to fame was I, I started the, one of the very, very first e-commerce sites in our industry. Mm -hmm. my, la my last job before I came back was in Silicon Valley, building up Silicon Valley and construction trades. Mm -hmm. So I saw all the, you know, when Amazon was just doing, I mean, Borders was kicking Amazon's butt mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. then. So I got to grow up with all those web brains and do a lot of work for them. So I got a chance to just absorb all that and brought that back to this industry. Yeah, very cool. I know, I saw you did an interview with the guys from AR15.com where you were talking about a lot of this. If, yeah. if folks want to go check that out, you were building elevators, you said, in Miami? I was, I was an elevator and, yeah, yeah, elevators and escalators, that kind of thing. <laughs> so subcontractors to all the big high rise stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, it's so, a cool job. Yeah, so that was your entry before coming into, coming into Brownells, right? Right. And then right. you have a degree in marketing, so you're a marketing guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, marketing and administration and MBA and all kinds of other yeah. things there to keep your, your mind sharp. Yeah, yeah. Did you want to ask something here, Walt? Go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, marketing. And I, I understand. I, <laughs> but a gut, this, this trade, this world is a little different than the average. You know, we're not selling toothpaste or things that right. people have to have. You don't have to. I don't want to get people upset. Yeah. You don't have to have a gun. Watch, <laughs> watch your know, watch dirty mouth. Uh oh, we're lighting up over here. Yeah. Or you don't. Or you don't How have dare to. Dare you, the, Walter? You don't have to have the latest site, or you don't have to what? have the latest. Stop, Walter. I, I, I know. Stop. I know. God forbid. Um, so you, it's, stop it's kind right of a now. different. Sometimes you have to convince or show people they uh -huh. need something, and I think that's kind of what Brownells did, and early, even early on. You yeah. mentioned your father or your grandfather was a writer too, right. right? So I know Brownells wrote like tech, tech papers for different products and how to use right. them and things like that. People collected that stuff. The gunsmith people kept mm -hmm. it as a before there was the interweb. You know, they flip <clears> through their pages and go, "Oh, look at that! Yeah, that's how I do that." Yeah. Back when people could read, you know. Yeah. Right. And right. So yes, the. Um, the how-to was, we went from a hardcore gunsmith at our beginning that my grandfather targeted, and my dad changed the focus a bit to be uh, a tabletop gunsmith. Anybody who's doing the fixing at, on their tabletop, which expanded the market from about you know, 17,000, 20,000 people back in the day when it started to about, about 2 million when my dad decided to broaden the scope. But when we did that, we had to write a lot of content on how-to um, people, when they're fixing a gun, one of the big things they they first change a, 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 a cassette nut or, or put in a bolt, they don't want the gun to blow up on them. That's their biggest fear that's mm -hmm. kind of rooted down deep. I don't want it to blow up my hand. Uh, so we had to put a lot of uh, how-tos to make sure that the, each step was followed. So once they get that first thing done, then they start rolling into everything else. So a, mm -hmm. lot, of, a lot of tech help, a lot of online stuff now, a lot of articles were written. Yeah. Um, and it's you know, been pretty all, awesome. All that, all, all that stuff from from days go past. All that stuff about how to do this is still all available. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all online right now. We, got gun, we have four books that my dad wrote called Gunsmith Kinks, um, yeah. things along yeah. those lines. So it's kind of how to do it. Um, but but back to the marketing question. I kind of started this. How do you how do you inspire creativity? Is really what it is. And how do you fire up yourself? They're very personal when you when you buy one. Uh, we're like, what's your favorite hunting gun? And you, you don't, you'll get the caliber and then you'll get the hunting story. Mm -hmm. So these are really right. passionate. Or what's your protection pistol? You get why it's, mm -hmm. it's your protection pistol. Mm -hmm. So well, you're really marketing to the heart and to the individual person. Mm -hmm. And when you start to accessorize, that's what the AR-15 is fantastic. It's, 
you can make that your just exactly do the thing that you want, look like the way you want, fit it perfectly to you with, without having to have a buy a lathe or a mill. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants that personalization, and that's kind of what we're selling is make it yours. It's a very personal thing. So all those those sixty or seventy guns that you have, they're all individual yeah. um, characters to them. Yeah, and by the and, way, I see I see questions and stuff coming in. We're going to definitely get sure. to that, okay? And I see super chats and stuff. We'll get to that here in a second. Walt, did you want to um, follow up? By the way, smash the thumbs well, up, people. And and that, yeah, the AR-15 is the the perfect Lego gun because yeah. you don't have to be a gunsmith to build one. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't have yeah. to. I think have an AR is easier than a 1911, which is not really oh, like the most yeah. complicated oh, yeah, gun yeah. out there. But it's definitely no. Easy. But to get it to run right, it can be complicated. <laughs> and, and, and not that an AR-15 can't be complicated to get to run right too, right. if you if you don't have yeah. any clue. Yeah. But the physical assembly of it's pretty simple. I mean, it right? is. so yeah, with basic tools you can buy or you can borrow from your friends, mm -hmm. you can put one together. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, it's pretty simple and easy. And then these days we're talking about uh, relative. Well, I don't know, not these exact days, <laughs> you know. But it's yeah, relatively I'll, inexpensive. Prices have come uh, come down and yeah, back up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So I think availability is more of the issue now than price. So yeah, right. I, um, on certain things, you know, there's as we know, there's been a run on everything here lately. So yeah. yeah. So here's one of the things that. <laughs> That I, I know you're looking at the chat. Is there something in the chat? That's... Well, you know, a DCG 44, 60, 70. I'm a, I guess, <laughs> 60 or 70 guns. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> rookie numbers. <laughs> yeah, I'm a rookie. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to be generous. You know? <laughs> yeah. Somebody's listening. I don't know how many guns I've really got. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. I we're... couldn't tell exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's go to this for a second. We'll go to the super chat because Tyvin gave us a super chat. We'll go to his question and then we'll jump back into the history stuff. Uh, the Tyvin Show, shout out to him. He's one of the moderators, helps us out, always here. We appreciate yep. him, uh, especially we appreciate the five bucks. Uh, Tyvin says, can you ask about record gun sales and what he's selling and what's the best selling gun um, everyone is buying and most sold gun in his store? So they Sure. Okay, if, so record if you, sales. If you, yeah, I don't know if you, you know, I know there's lots of people over there keeping tracks of all of this, so, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, the numbers, the numbers, um, uh, I'll speak to Adjusted Nicks, and there's mm -hmm. some great resources for Adjusted Nicks. Mm -hmm. um, NSSF has some great charts. Mm -hmm. We've seen, we've seen a doubling for the season. Usually, usually in the summertime, you'll have a big spike uh, through Christmas. And it starts to swing down. So right now is usually the lowest period in mm -hmm. the in the year. We're seeing we're seeing a straight line across about, about twice as many guns that we would have sold in this period um, we've ever sold. Uh, so we're seeing some days are up 300% on average. Right now we'd be uh, we'd be about that 30 34% year over year mm -hmm. right now. So it's a bit it's a good jump. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty consistent, and it, and the industry is bone dry right now. Yeah. Meaning, there's no inventory in piles in anybody's location, including yeah. retail, wholesalers, or factories. What's interesting, in March, the industry be, before March 15th, before everybody kind of got this this COVID fever going, the industry had a lot of fat in it. A lot of inventory sitting around so we saw a huge spike and what that was is it was the industry getting the inventory getting sucked out of the industry factories can keep up with a with a short-term 20 percent spike mm -hmm. we saw it was 40s and 50s and 60 percent consistent spike when you measure the weeks so sales were up that we could fill demand right then but then as the inventory to be depleted demand was still high and we're bone dry right now Mm -hmm. Bad, the best selling, the best selling right now is, is the protection pistols. When people walk in, they'll say, "I want a pistol, I want a shotgun," and they're looking at Glocks right now because Glocks are Glocks. Um, you're a nine, a nine millimeter, your nine millimeter Glocks. Then when Glocks run out, they'll go right to the uh, the shield. Everybody wants the Sig, but Sig can't keep up. So when the Sigs are in, they're like this as well. Mm -hmm. But it's those companies that have a good supply and ability to supply. So the winners right now, um, Glock, 
Smith and Wesson, which is really they're really ramping up. Um, when SIGs are in, great, but I would say the third is going to be the Rugers, mm-hmm. and, and those are the great uh, pistols. And then uh, below that will be the shotgun. It's going to be the um, whatever whatever. Wait. Your Mossbergs, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assuming your traditional what? like Mossbergs I, I, and all that. Yeah, I'll yeah. take a guess at it. Bas- basic pump shotguns. You can't keep it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. yeah. The, whether the they're whether really... they're Mossbergs, whether they're made in Turkey, whether wherever they're made, basic pump shotguns. That's a... That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Um, and they're going to be those those shorter barrels, not the long duck uh, right. duck not... length, not the 34s or above. So these are these are tactical home shotguns. Uh, right, and then right after that sale, in the same box will be um, a bunch, a bunch of home defense nine millimeter and uh, twelve buck, twelve dollar or twelve, uh, twelve gauge buckshot. Um, if the person's buying for the other family members, it'll be a twenty gauge shotgun. Mm-hmm. So really? we're seeing, yeah, mm-hmm. we're seeing, we're seeing a, a stuff that sounds like this, and you guys could probably confirm this on. I've never wanted to buy a gun before, but now it's time. And uh, show me what I need to know. Well, show me what I need to know. Mm-hmm. And we'll go through. And the first thing we, we show them is where to go get training. Mm-hmm. And then the second thing is here's your Glock, your Smith, or your Sig, or your Ruger, and here's your here's your Mossberg. Mm-hmm. But go get training. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of that's happening with the shotgun thing. This is me, you know, just speculating or whatever. Um, I think that's happening because in most places that's what's legal. Try you know, it. Your pump action. Well, gonna, Joe, yeah. Joe, Joe Biden says that's all you need. So <laughs> yeah, two Joe shots. Biden says that's all you need, and boom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's not what he's talking now, but we'll definitely. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, we'll definitely well. get it. That's old Joe Biden. That's old Joe Biden. This is real yeah. old new Joe Biden. Yeah, yeah. yeah if we want to figure it out. <laughs> Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.